Hey, this is Mark Williams of Swine Life Barbecue. Today I have two slabs of St. Louis cut ribs we picked up from the butcher shop down in Pensacola, Florida. We're gonna show you a little bit different recipe to do on ribs today. This is what we call a steakhouse rib. We're gonna get some salt on them, get them out there on the pellet grill, and then we're gonna mix up a rosemary, garlic, and herb butter to baste them throughout the whole cook process. We're gonna be cooking them for about four, four and a half hours, cook them till they're tender, and then get them off, and we're gonna have a good eating, savory rib. Let's get started. For this recipe, we're not trimming anything. All I'm gonna do is flip them over and get the membranes off. So like always, I take a paper towel, I find you a place to start right here in the middle between two bones, and just pinch that membrane with your paper towel just like that. Work your finger all the way underneath, and then pull it off. Spare ribs a little bit more difficult to pull than loin backs. Just take your time and get as much of that membrane off as you can. Now that we got the membrane pulled, I got them flipped over, and all we're seasoning with today is some fine grind sea salt. If you got coarse, you can use that as well. I'm just gonna get a good medium to heavy coat because this is the only seasoning going on them. And we'll start with the backside. We'll get them flipped over. And do the same thing to the top side. Again, we're gonna go pretty heavy as well. Now what this salt's gonna do, it's gonna make these ribs have a good golden brown color. It's gonna make that fat kind of crisp up on us. Now that we got the salt on them, we'll let them sit out here for about 30 minutes. We'll go out here and get this Griller Grill Silverback fired up and we'll get them on the pit. For this recipe today, we're gonna be cooking on our Griller Grill Silverback. Now since we're cooking such a good savory rib, we're gonna fill the hopper up with some Bear Mountain Savory Barbecue Pellets. This is one of our new blends and let me tell you, it has a great smoke flavor and it's packed full of savory notes. We'll get the Silverback turned on and set it to 250. Give it a few minutes, she'll be up to temp and we'll get these ribs on. This silver batch came right on up to 250. It's time to get these ribs on. So that salt's done pulled a ton of moisture out the top of them. They're glistening. We'll get them on this pit. As you can tell, them Bear Mountain pellets, they sure do put on a good smoke. And we'll get the lid closed. Now we're gonna get in here and get this basin of butter made up and then we'll get it on the pit so it starts roasting them herbs and melting that butter. Now to make our basting butter. We're gonna start with four sticks of salted butter. We have one shallot kind of roughly chopped. Six cloves of garlic, roughly chopped. Make sure to get all of them garlics. One tablespoon of chopped rosemary. One teaspoon of chopped sage. One teaspoon of chopped thyme. Then we got one tablespoon of coarse black pepper. Now we'll just take this out there and put it on the pit. Let that butter start melting. It's gonna roast these herbs. And in about 45 minutes, we're gonna give these ribs their first baste. These ribs have been on for just a little bit over an hour. We're gonna see how our butter's doing and go ahead and give them a baste. They're starting to get a little color. Just butter sit up front. Of course, you can smell them herbs, the garlic. They don't have much color right now. This butter's gonna caramelize on top of them. We're gonna start getting some herbs on top of them. Oh man, that herb does smell good. You can see some of the blood spots have come up. Don't worry about that. As we baste them, that probably will wash off and these ribs will get a little bit more color and you won't even notice it. I'm not gonna put the butter back on. I'm gonna just sit it over here to the side next to the pit. That way it'll stay good and warm. We'll get the lid closed. Let them go another hour. We're just over two hours in. The butter's still sitting on the side, staying plenty hot. Let's see what we're looking like. Oh yeah, we're starting to get good color. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna get this mixed up good, get down in that butter and get those herbs on this brush and let them get on top of these ribs. Some of that garlic and onion comes out, gets on them ribs, be just as good. And no joke, I wish y'all could smell this. These flavors smell awesome on this grill. They drip down on that heat diffuser. That butter starts browning. It smells great. I'm gonna let them go another hour. We're at the four hour mark. We basted the three hour mark. Let's see where we're at. As you can tell, we got some great color. Those herbs really had a good texture. Great appearance of these ribs. We're gonna get them one more baste. Throughout the whole cook process, that's all we're doing is just layering flavors. We only started with salt. We brought all the flavor at the end and during the cook process, just a layer on at a time. While we're in here, we'll go ahead and check doneness, see what they're like. They feel soft. Temping probably 202, 203, they feel good. We'll let this base set up, go about another 20 or 30 minutes, and then we're getting them off, getting them on the cutting board. After four and a half hours, we got these ribs off the pit and placed them here on the cutting board and let them rest for about 15 minutes. Just as a quick recap, we start off with two slabs of St. Louis spare ribs, pulled the membrane and then seasoned with just salt. Got them out there on that pit. And while they were on the pit, we got some butter, some garlic, some rosemary, all these good herbs that really bring on that steakhouse flavor. That's one thing I do love about pork is it takes on flavors and works well with anything. You can go from mild to wild, 
all complements that pork really well. Once we got our butter made up, we placed it on the pit so it can melt and get good and hot. We were basting these ribs about every hour. Now keep an eye on that butter. You're welcome to leave it on the pit, but you don't want it to burn. I pulled hours off after the first hour just kept it on the side of the pit and kept it good and warm. At the four and a half hour mark, these temp about 205, they're good and tender, and I'm ready to dive into these. So I'm gonna have to go for this one up front that's got all that extra garlic on it. We'll scoot this other one off to the side. So we'll start cutting right here on this end. Now these are tender enough, you could pull them right apart, but I'm gonna get me a good two bone cut on these. Got great color. Of course, all them herbs really add a good texture. We'll take this one out of the middle, see what it looks like. And it's packed full of moisture, got a good color. I have to try me a bite of this. <laughs> I can already tell you. Bone pulls right out, good and tender. Man, that salt really made that pork flavor shine through. And of course, them herbs, they all go with pork. And it's an excellent flavor rib. It's completely different from your standard barbecue rib. You got a clean bone like that, you're starting off on the right foot. I can't get over that flavor. You can tell on the back side of these ribs, that salt really made that fat turn golden brown and super just melt your mouth tender. That's a wrap for us today at Swine Life. We appreciate y'all checking this video out. Y'all gotta try this recipe. It's a completely different twist on a good eating pork rib. If you ain't already noticed, we had to take a little break and get us a little pile of bones going ourselves. The camera lady was giving me the look. She had to try some of these ribs. If y'all got any questions, shoot us a message on Facebook or Instagram. And as always, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see y'all next time.